A House of Representatives committee recommends immunity for heads of National Assembly and, of course, the Chief Justice of Nigeria. While President Buhari has finally signed the Electoral Act bill into law. And Russia launches a military action in Ukraine after weeks of diplomatic moves fails. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anakon. The subject of the immunity clause for members of political office, for the members of National Assembly, in talking about the um, Senate president, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, and of course the CJN, has caused a controversy in the National Assembly since about 2016. Now, just recently, a bill seeking to grant immunity to presiding officers of the National Assembly and judicial officers was rejected by the House of Representatives Committee on the amendment of the 1999 Constitution. Currently, only the president, the vice president, governors and their deputies currently enjoy immunity under the 1999 constitution. A similar bill was introduced in the 8th Assembly. However, the bill was also rejected by lawmakers at the time. And in electoral matters, President Muhammad Buhari has finally signed Electoral Act Amendment Bill into law about a month after the National Assembly sent the bill to him. Well, joining us to discuss this and more is Honorable Rima Shawalu. He's a member of the House of Representatives. Thank you so much for joining us, Honorable Shawalu. Thank you very much. All right. I'm grateful to be here. Uh, let's quickly look at this controversial recommendation by the House Committee on Constitution, uh, Constitutional Amendment. Um, I know that you are on the side of the divide that kicked against it, um, especially because it's asking for uh, Im the immunity clause for both the Speaker, the Senate's President, and of course the CJN. Why are you against this? Well, in the first place, it is not true that the House of Representatives Committee on Constitutional Conference decided that there should be immunity. When the bill came for consideration before the House Committee, it was voted down, it was rejected. At the Conference Committee, sorry, at the Harmonization Committee with the Senate, the Joint Committees adopted the Senate position because the House did not have a position having voted down the recommendation to have immunity. And the recommendation of the Senate was passed. The recommendation of the Senate was to strip the executive of certain forms of immunity. They only were to enjoy qualified immunity and the reason, the logic was very simple. If the if a governor arrests a child now, are you saying that he cannot be tried? Because arresting a child is not part of the functions of his office. Or if a governor takes a gun, or president takes a gun and shoots somebody, are you going to say that because of immunity, he should not be tried? So we did accept the Senate position qualify immunity for the executive. And we did not, at the harmonization, harmonization meeting, adopt any recommendation whatsoever to have immunity for the CJN or the presiding officers of the National and State Houses of Assemblies. So procedurally, I'm surprised that such a recommendation will appear on the recommendations to be voted by the House. And it's very unfortunate because that is what gives the press and other people the right to keep claiming that budgets in the National Assembly are padded and that a lot of forgery is coming out of the National Assembly. Our procedures do not, do, do not, procedures do not recognize 
having a recommendation come to the House that was voted down at the committee level. So, so what, do you, really what do you strange. presume is happening now? Because you're saying that it's coming to you as a shock of sorts because it was voted down uh, in the first instance. And I remember in 2016, um, it was kicked against. It was kicked against early this year. Um, so what exactly do you think is going on? How do you think this got into the recommendations uh, for uh, under the constitutional amendment? Uh, do you think someone is playing well, a, a fast one? Well, I don't know whether a first one is being played, but the secretariat of the that produced the paper must have made a mistake, because I do remember the House committee voted down that recommendation, and the Senate version, which was adopted at the conference committee, varied and reduced the forms of immunity to be enjoyed by the chief executive. That is following the best practice around the world. You cannot come and say, because someone is holding an executive position, he commits a crime that is unrelated to his the functions, performance of his office, and that such a person would not be tried. There is no form of, of executive, complete, unqualified, uh, immunity around the world again. The United States does not have it. The USA does not have it. Most countries in the world do no, do no longer have unqual uh, I mean this unqualified immunity. As a matter of fact, the few countries that have unqualified immunity are the countries that, are, that have dictatorship and have deficiency in their democratic practice. So it will be surprising that National Assembly that will want to take Nigeria down the road of countries that have serious disrepute. I, I remember that in 2016, uh, if I'm not mistaken, at some point you were asking that um, the executive be stripped of some of this, some level of immunity. Uh, and uh, I, I see that you face some, 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 um, you know, um, uh, a position on that particular issue. Are, are you still standing that ground? Because it seems like the argument you're making is that is in that direction. Are you sure that we're ready to strip, um, you know, our executives of that level of immunity? Uh, already, some people are complaining about distractions um, here and there as a result of petitions and court cases against our executives or even our politicians. So, uh, do you think we've gotten to a level where that can be done? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I did sponsor a bill for uh, the alteration of the constitution, uh, which, which, which sought the bill seeks to strip the executive of unqualified and uh, uh, complete immunity that they have today. Unfortunately, the bill came for first reading. It was not brought up for second reading. And so I was delighted when a similar version was brought from the Senate. And the version, and it's very clear, that we cannot uh, have the extension of any form of immunity to legislators or principal officers. A, a principal officer or a presiding officer does not perform executive positions. And he does not stand to reason, therefore, that he cannot or she cannot engage in those activities in the position of his office that uh, will, will require any form of immunity. If a speaker of House of, of a State House of Assembly needs immunity to go to his constituency, then all members of the state assembly or the national assembly require immunity. Immunity, the speaker or the presiding officer is first among equal. He is not supposed to be an executive and is not supposed to express any views other than the views that the house has. It's very unfortunate that we are reaching a stage where the National Assembly or even the State Houses of Assemblies 
who want to overreach, to take over functions of executive, issue instructions to MDS, and uh, forget the primary role that we have in the Constitution. I do not think, and it is going to, it's a very big sad disservice to Nigeria, it's a big disservice to the National Assembly, for anyone to come out today in the 21st century to be wanting to have immunity for legislators. I'd like to, not, I'd like it to, does not, it does not follow. I'd like to go back to um, Mr. Leo Ogo. Uh, he is, um, I think he was in the Eighth Assembly at the time. Uh, he, by, at the time, he was the minority leader. Um, he was obviously of the PDP, representing Delta State. Um, and he made a case saying that there are too many distractions, um, too many people coming up with accusations, allegations. Sometimes these things are to distract you from uh, the work that you've been called to do as a, a representative, uh, you know. And he says that this will help also. Something that hit me was that he, he said this will help for there to be more independence in the legislature. And I'm asking you, as a member of the uh, legislature uh, in the lower chamber, is the legislature not independent enough as it would want to be? And is this as a result of the constitution or is it as a result of the people who make up the legislature? Let me say two things quickly as I answer that question. In the first place, the legislature already has some form of immunity, unqualified immunity over what we say, over our debates, over our functions. So uh, now to extend it to immunity, a speaker goes, a speaker for instance, or Senate president goes and uh, slaps his domestic, domestic staff. And you say the domestic staff cannot uh, take him to court. That is ridiculous. Donald Trump was taken to court. Uh, the Boris, Boris Johnson, is facing charges in the UK today. And if you go around the world, sitting presidents have been brought to book. So but but you're talking about countries where, you're talking about saner, uh, with due respect, you're talking about countries where the, the law, uh, justice is allowed to take its due course. I don't think that the same can be said about Nigeria. I'll remind you of that, of, of that me, legislature. Uh, let let I w I'd let like to talk about the, the PDP member who, slapped a, a lady in a shop. Do you remember that. that case? What was I done was to, that to that man? I'm a PDP member. I was a PDP member. We voted against it and we killed that, that proposition in the Eighth Assembly. And I assure you that that proposition is going to be killed. It's not going to succeed because it brings the National Assembly to distribute, wanting to have, uh, to have. We voted against it. In, in, in the Eighth Assembly. What was done and, to Elisha Abba, who, who hit a woman in a store, um, asked his oddly to also arrest and take this woman away from her place of business? He's a, he was a PDP member at the time. Um, nothing was what done. What I'm saying so, is that the law, sh the law should take his course. You are following my argument. Yeah, but, but the has the law... Take his and that's why I asked you. You're, you're making how, reference to the has, UK, you're making reference to the US, where justice does take its actual course. But when you leave that you saying, here in Nigeria... Are you, are you saying, therefore, that we are subhumans and we cannot... Uh, I did not say that in any way, but I'm asking, or, can so we say the same you, about you, Nigeria? You look for best practice, you don't look for bad practice. Are you telling me to go and copy someone that is doing something that is wrong? I should copy someone that is doing what is right. What is right is that a political position that you hold does not strip you of the fact that you are a citizen and you, are, you have rights and you should have obligations, obligations not to commit crime. So if you commit a crime, you should be punished. If the senator who was a PDP member, I just imagine if the senator had immunity it means that that woman would have been slapped for no, no reason. Mm -hmm. No, we can't allow that to happen. In the legislature, uh, uh, they do, does not need immunity to be free, to be independent. You choose to be independent. Let me even tell you something about another best practice in the United States. The president of the United States appoints the minister of justice or secretary of justice. And the Secretary of Justice 
still does his duties without let or hindrance, which is why Renault Janet set up the committee, star committee, to, to probe uh, Bill Clinton. And that keeps happening around the world where, where, thing, where, where democracy thrives, while the economy is improving. When a system is OPEC, crime thrives. And that is why we cannot, Nigeria cannot afford to have immunity extended to the legislature and the judiciary. Okay. What we need is to reduce the immunity that the executive has so that when you know that if you commit a crime, you, you can be punished for it. Okay. All right. Well, I want to say a, a big thank you to you. Uh, Honorable Rima Shawalu is a member of the House of Representatives, and we appreciate your thoughts. Have a good evening. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. All right. And thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a quick break now. When we return, we discuss the Russian op occupation of Ukraine. In fact, Ukraine has been uh, invaded by Russia since yesterday. We'll tell you more about it when we come back.